Today on the UK Brew Project, we're Velgoods. The story of Velgoods dates back to 1786. In 1786, Dennis Herbert and John Cooch bought an oil mill in Wisbeach in Cambridgeshire, and at some stage over the next decade, they converted that into a brew house. In 1795, the brewery and four tied pubs were bought by Thomas Fawcett and the North Brink Brewery was established. The brewery exchanged hands many times over the next century until in 1877, John Elgood, who was a maltster at the time, and George Harrison purchased the brewery for £40,000. The number of pubs tied to the brewery at this stage numbered about 70. Um, John Elgood took full control of the brewery in 1878 and the first brew of the newly named Elgoods was produced. The pubs to this day um, remain, not the pub, but the brewery to this day remains in the Elgood family and it's currently in its fifth generation. Um, I don't have a segue for this one. I'm sort of just thirsty and I'm going to crack open one of their longer running beers. I wasn't able to confirm what is their longest running beer um, or what was their first brew. Um, but what I'm going to do is crack open Cambridgeshire, which is a 3.8%, um, I want to say bitter off the top of my head. Right, so that is chilled nicely and open and I'm going to put it in my sort of branded, own branded glassware. I'm going to turn this so we can actually see the beer pour a bit better. Not nucleated, I've learnt my lesson. I'm trying to pour slowly so I don't get too much of a head and now I'm having to pour a bit more aggressively to build the head on top on this. Um, I can see the glass isn't fully clean, just to knock some bubbles out <laughs> so it looks a bit better. Um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, it's a clear uh, beer. You can see right the way through. That's a proper beer colored beer. Nose, oh, okay. Um, sweeter than I was expecting. I was just gonna check. Um, Cambridge Bitter, yep, is our best-selling cast beer and has won numerous awards. Please see the website for the full list. Okay, not too much on the nose off it. Okay, it's a bitter with a um, um, bit of, it's a mixture. There's, it feels like there's a bit of fruit flavor to it. And then some the malts, uh, roasted malts in there as well. It's not bad, um, it's chilled nicely. It's not too chilled, it's chilled nicely and it's a lovely day today. And this is the first beer of the day, so that's gonna go down a treat and it's only 3.8, so I'm on for a session if I want to be. <laughs> um, going back to the, build, uh, the brewery, the building was renovated in the Georgian style and is still mainly in use today with that Georgian facade still remaining. And actually it's the last of its style in the UK with that uh, Georgian front. Most of the big ones in <coughs> London and around the country were all obviously torn down and uh, turned into housing or whatever else. Um, in the First World War, the brewery was actually uh, firebombed, but it failed to explode. And the shell of one of the bombs is actually available to see in the brewery today um, on one of their brewery tours. Um, the brewery had a new brew plant installed in the 1920s, some of which is still in use today. Um, that would be the uh, traditional copper vessels and even some of the wooden fermenters. In World War II, some of the metal vats and tons were melted down to support the war effort. However, they retained their 17th century uh, liquor vat. In the early 1950s, the brewery was modernized with most of that 1920s equipment being removed. Now, I'm gonna jump a huge amount because I can't see much in those until after war years um, that much. It looked like as a family brewer they seem to be doing well um, you know keep going and all the rest um, in 1983 
the actual brewery was listed as a grade two building in the UK, which means it's of a special interest warranting every effort to preserve it. I.e. you can't just knock it down or turn it into something else and any changes you want to make need to go through certain processes and procedures. In 2002, ownership of the brewery moved into its fifth generation of the Elgood family and it moved to Belinda Sutton who was the eldest of Nigel Elgood's three daughters and she became the first woman to be managing director of the company considering that Nigel himself was a single son of his father who was a single son so uh, and he had three daughters so <laughs> it changed completely <laughs> at that stage. Um, the pub estate had been reduced over the years and the pubs were closed and sold off um, particularly where they had uh, two pubs in one village. Um, I did read an article where the company had said and it was in the um, Brewer and Distiller International that each free trade pub was worth 10 of their own village pubs in the actual balance sheet profit. So you can see why they were sort of going down that route. Um, this move to sell into the free trade can be seen with only 20% of their beer sales um, being from, 20% uh, of their beer sales being through the 35 uh, tied pubs that they owned, with the rest being via free trade and pub chains such as like Weatherspoons, which I know is free of tie, but it's a chain. So just like the specified difference there. The brewery can produce around 20,000 barrels, 5.5 uh, million pints. But from the latest figures that I could see in 2007, they were running about 7,000 barrels, which is 2 million pints. 70% um, of this was traditional car scales, 25% keg and 5% bottled. And the bottling for them is on contract with Robinson's Brewery, who come and collect the beer in a tanker and bottle it for them. Gonna have another sip of this. That is going down all too easy. Oh my days. Right. The water for the brewery um, comes from the town supply and is actually quite alkaline in um, levels at that stage. Um, what's interesting though is they actually use water from the river, but not in a way you may think. They use the water from the river um, in their wort chiller uh, to cool down the beer. And this then heated water is not used at all for brewing. Forget any rumours that you may hear about that. It's actually just returned to the water slightly warm because um, it's extracted the heat from their brewing. And that's quite environmental because they're not having to chill any water and run through. And the water that's coming through from the river is just fed back out again, untreated in a sense, which is good. Um, as stated, L goods themselves were mainly known for their cast beer, so Miles and Bitters, which are still big sellers from their you know range. But they did switch direction into in the 2000s. Um, they had a small 10 barrel pilot brewery uh, built, which enabled them to try recipes and smaller batch brews. Um, it has been used for short runs of both seasonal and lower selling regular brands. The interesting thing about the small pilot is actually it has to be run concurrently with the main plant. And so they were saying they were using it every fourth mash um, just because of how the whole um, grains and everything is set up for it. The grist, it needs to come from the main to go in there. Um, but every fourth mash they were using that smaller plant, which is interesting. Um, alongside this, they had two large copper trays, which Elkwood referred to as their cool ships. Um, these copper trays were used before the advent of refrigeration to cool down the beers over their large surface areas. These sort of cool ships are still used in Belgium today by brewers making lambic beers and they use it as a way to um, introduce wild yeast into the beer which creates those sour flavours you get from a lambic beer. And um, Elgood's then decided to reuse these old cool ships and uh, create their own Lambic beers. But theirs are called cool ships um, because the term Lambic is a protected status for beers brewed in a particular region in southwest Belgium, which I'm not even going to try to bring myself to pronounce because I'm probably going to butcher it. Um, so their Lambic beers are cool ships, which I've got two here. 
and the Cool Ship beers were first brewed in April 2013 and actually brought about an increase in sales of their beers overseas to places like Italy, Spain, uh, the US and Finland. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crack open one of these Cool Ships. Um, I have the Cool Ship number one, but I'm actually more interested in the Mango one. Um, I'm nicely still says in the bottle, the company's still owned and run by the fifth generation of the family. Um, just looking to see if it gives anything else. Yes, it does. Right, I'm going to crack this open. Maybe read a bit of the label there because I haven't had actually read this. This one is the 330 mil, whereas the bigger 500 mil over here. I've got um, a nucleated glass for this one. Oh my god, that is oh the like a puree, mango puree. Wow, this smells amazing already. I'm really, really, really hoping the flavors live up to this nose. Oh my days, this is smelling beautiful. Again, not the cleanest of glasses, I do apologize. I, this one was much cleaner. <laughs> this one's got a lot um, sticking to it. I'm gonna do the same again, which unsettles, unsettles some of the bubbles there just so I can get a better view for it. Right, nose, oh, hang on. Nose has changed slightly. That mango sort of puree smoothie smell was there. Still there, but I'm not sure what that is. I was getting more of a, I can't think what that is. Yeah, I can't think what that is. Um, I was gonna say an alcohol smell, but um, it's not an alcohol smell that I'm getting off it. This is only, Four and a half, five percent, isn't it? I'm looking around desperately. Five percent, yeah. Yeah, it's it's got something else that's in there, like a toffee apple smell, maybe. All right, enough of that. Let's taste it. Yeah, the smell probably is the lambic smell because um, you get it in the taste. It's not a massive sour. The sourness is there. It, it comes on the, you can feel it on the tongue and the, uh, around the uh, mouth there. It's, it's nice. It's not a puckering massive um, sourness. The only thing I would say about this is the mango smelt amazing coming off it, but in the flavor, there's not so much mango. Um, Hmm, I'm getting like a, a sweet sort of nectar flavor, but not quite mango. Um, but it smelled amazingly mango to begin with, but yeah, um, I would drink it, but it's, um, if it had tasted exactly as it first smelt, oh boy, would that be one of my most favorite beers I would be buying again and again. Um, but not quite, it's there, but it's not quite. Um, depends on the mango variety as well, doesn't it? Right, um, going back. So I think that sort of brings us up to date with Elgood's. Um, sadly for me, their online shop has been closed throughout um, this whole, these lockdowns. And I've had to pick my beers up through Beers of Europe, which is fine. I buy beer from them and they're a good source, but it'd be nice to have bought direct from the brewery, support them and also you got the option for bigger choice. So you can see I've only got seven here, but there are a lot more beers that they actually produce. So since I'm on about that, let's talk about their core beers. Um, I'm going to take another sip of the mango. Hmm. It's sweet. It is sweet, but it's not mango in my eyes. It's something else that's there, but I just can't think what it is. It's definitely more a citrus, um, orangey, bit of lemon maybe. Yeah. So their core beers, um, uh, Elgas themselves that actually produce more darker beers than light beers. Um, so I'll go through some of their, um, 
core ones. I keep saying I'll repeat myself. So the, the Cambridge Bitter, 3.8% is one of the core ones. They also have um, Golden Newt, which is a 4.1% uh, golden ale. They have um, Black Dog, which is a 3.6% mild. Then they've got the uh, Blackberry Porter over here, which is 4.5%. And they've also got the Plum Porter, which is 4.5%. I love the sound of both of these. I'm assuming it's the same porter base. So provided I'm going to probably open the Blackberry first, not now on camera, but I'll open the Blackberry first. And if the Blackberry tastes good, then the plums can be amazing. Um, if it doesn't taste good, oh dear. <laughs> I, I hope better for the plum. Whereas if I do it the other way and open the plum, go to Blackberry, oh, it could be all downhill. And also um, one of their other core cool ones, just to finish off, was the 5.5% uh, um, ESB, so extra special bitter, which is the warrior here. So I've got most of their core beers available here. Um, they, on the cool ship front, um, they have their original, which is this six percenter um, English sour beer. Just looking, yeah, traditional methods. Duh, duh, duh. I'm just going to quickly stop for a second and have a look. Yeah, the, the uh, beer is blended with mango syrup and aromas, mango aroma. Hmm. Um, they also do uh, other ones, so they've got raspberry and black currant, and they tend to be around the 5%, the fruity ones, uh, whereas this core one is 6%. They also have um, some wheat beers, and I've only got one of these here. Um, I've picked up the apple um, but they also do like apple and vanilla and cherry wheats which sound amazing again on the flavors it's just whether they have added the aromas better than this i do like a nice apple beer i know it sounds strange why not get a cider an apple beer is quite nice cherry beer as well or oh, goes down really well all right i'm gonna go back to the bitter quickly Right, after going from that to that, the sweetness on here has definitely brought out more of that bitterness, um, more malt flavour. That's that is nice, still very sessionable, although slightly warmed up, still cool to touch, so that's good. Right, let's move on to awards for them. So their um, what is this brand called again? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. So they call this something. Um, I can't remember the because these are cool ships. This is like I think QE or something. So their cherry wheat um, out of this has won gold in the bottle and can at uh, Siva Eastern Regional Beer Awards in 2018. In fact, they actually seem to have done really well over the years in the Siva Eastern. In 2019, uh, they won at that regional gold for their plum porter in the specialty medium to dark in bottle cans. And they won silver for Warrior in the premium bitter in bottle cans. They won silver for Black Dog in the cask for dark beers. And uh, the Cool Ship Fruit um, won gold uh, for the sour bottle cans. And they won bronze overall for their Cool Ships in bottle can. Um, and that's like the most recent sort of awards ceremony because most were canceled in 2020. But that is an impressive list, especially you've got some of their more traditional range ones. And then you've got these, the wheat ones, um, and also the flavoured um, sour ones, which is impressive. Right, so this has been the UK Brewery Project. This has been Elgood's. Take care, everyone.